openly about the state appointed preachers in the churches and the compromising members of, of the churches who received no, they, they didn't get any persecution, they didn't run into any problems, they didn't have any issues with the communist state. It was the faithful. It was the faithful who were the ones who were suffering persecution, who were being uh, arrested almost nightly and beaten, and if they wouldn't relent, would be arrested uh, and given a, a, a fake trial and sent off to prison for numbers of years. And while they were there in the prisons, the deprivations, the persecutions, the beatings, the starving, all the different things that they would endure because they were faithful. The devil could care less about heretics. <coughs> you know, and the reason why somebody's a heretic is to avoid the person, you know, here he's talking about, you know, these Jewish Christians who are insisting that you had to keep the law. Well, that's because they still wanted to be able to be in good standing with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. Oh, yes, well, we both, but, you know, we still keep the law. We do this. We, we don't deny any of those, you know, ecumenicalists. Verse 13, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. No one who preaches lies, you know, none of them keep the law. You can't keep the law. Even if they had the everything available in which to keep the law. You still can't do it, and they don't. It's just like the rich young ruler that came to Christ. You know, and what lack I yet? So Christ tells him what he needs to do. And they went away disappointed. Why? Because, see, he was doing all the things that somebody could see, making a fair show in the flesh. But when he told him to well, sell everything that you've got and give it to the poor and come follow me. Well, okay, that, <laughs> that wasn't going to work for him. You know, what they want to be able to do is be able to give an impression that they are more righteous than everybody else. You know, look at me. They, they, they want that fair show in the play. And if they can say, hey, look at Here's all my, look at these disciples that I have following me. I taught them the truth that they needed to be keeping the law. And if it hadn't been for me, making sure, that, you know, that's what it's all about. Verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. And this should be our motive in all that we do. Because we have nothing else <laughs> to glory in except that one thing, and that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got nothing to glory about that has to do with me, that's for sure. And because of it, okay, I am crucified under the world, and the world is crucified under me, and that's how it has to be. The world needs to be to us dead and meaningless. It is corrupt, and it is empty. Now, we can use it, as we're told, without abusing it, because we do have to live here in this world, but we are not to yoke up with it. And we are certainly not to cooperate with it. Why? Verse 15. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. And we are 
a new creature in Christ. And we have been separated from and have been freed from the world. That's why he asked them back earlier in Galatians, why do you desire to be entangled again with the bondage of the world? Verse 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them in mercy and upon the Israel of God. And that is exactly what will occur, is peace and mercy. And he also mentions, again, as we always should be, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Verse 17, From henceforth, let no man trouble me. And he's had it up to here with these heretics. Why? For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And look, you want proof that I'm Christ? Do you want proof that I am the apostle of the Gentiles? <laughs> there, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a walking signpost for that. Look at my body. Look at the scars. and the, Not just on the outside. But what the scars that he carried on the inside because of his service for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ himself bears in his body for what he did for us. I mean, those are badges of honor and glory. And then lastly, verse 18, Paul's standard closing, uh, is of grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And it's written by Paul in Rome to the Galatians. Grace. Grace is something that is continually being dispensed to us on a daily basis. Grace is the unmerited favor of God our Father. And we're given every day the grace we need to live our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to get any more grace than what you need. You know, for example, we talk about dying grace. You know, well, you, you'll get dying grace when you have the need for it, not before. You'll receive the grace that you require at the time that you require it. But it's something that is being continually dispensed to us in our lives. And that finishes our study of the book of Galatians. Are there any questions that anybody has? Any comments or anything that anybody needs me to repeat for them? All right, we'll stop there.